Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, The Concepts of ICT. In this lesson, we are going to learn about programming concepts. Again, it is an extension on the lesson series programming. In the previous lesson, we discussed about the programming concepts where we discussed uh, the algorithms, uh, what is a software, with what is a program, then how to write a software. The first step was writing an algorithm. There we discussed how to write an algorithm using two methods. Uh, we learned only one method actually. Then we started discussing about control structures and we discussed about sequence and selection. If you missed my previous lesson, you can go and watch my previous lesson on programming concepts. Uh, you will see that in the description as well the link to that previous lesson. So, in this lesson we are going to learn about the remaining control structure, which is the repetition. What is a repetition? In a repetition what happens is, it repeatedly executes a set of steps based on a given condition. In the selection what we had was, we did, we executed the next step based on the condition. There we, we didn't do that, uh, the set of steps repeatedly. But in this case, the, in repetitions, we execute those steps repeatedly. So that is the difference between the selection and the repetition. In both these cases, we have to use the decision signal. So let's do a simple example for this. Let's try to display the numbers from 1 to 10. Let's write the algorithm. Let's draw the flowchart for this case. So as in all other cases, here also we have to start with the terminator symbol or the start. Okay, first let's try to analyze this problem. What are the inputs that we should give? The problem is displaying the numbers from 1 to 10. Are there any inputs that we should give? No, we don't have to give anything to the system. The system knows where it should start, where it should stop. What it has to do is displaying the numbers from 1 to 10. So, there are no inputs. So what it should do, it should start from the number 1. Then after getting the number 1, it should display that number. This is the process we are discussing. Right? Uh, after getting the number 1, it should display that and then it should increase that number into 2 and then display that number and again it should increase that number. So it should repeatedly do this process, increasing the number, displaying the number, again increase that number, display that number, until the number becomes 10. And after 10 we are not going to display any number. There we have to stop. So think about this process. And now let's try to draw the flowchart for this. So what should be the next step? The first step actually. It should initiate the values that it should begin from number 1. So for that let's take a variable as n. So to initiate or set a value we should use the process symbol because it happens within the system. We are not getting a value, we are not displaying a value or we are not dis deciding on some concept. So we should use a process symbol to set the value of n to 1. So in the uh, set of steps what we did was first we displayed the value and then we increased that value and we repeatedly did that. So that is that should come within the repetition or within the repetition part. So a repetition should come after the decision symbol. So we should use a decision symbol in this place. What should be the decision? The decision should be, it should terminate at the value 10. After value 10, we are not going to display any value. 
it should display only the numbers from 1 to 10. So the decision should be when the value of n, that is the variable we are using, becomes 10, it should display and for the value 11, it should start. So we will write the decision as this. Here we check whether the value of n is greater than 10, which means 11, 12 or something like that. Then what we should do? If it is greater than 10, we should terminate the process. If that is a yes, we should stop the program. Hope you remember the concept of the decision symbol. There we had two outputs. Always we have two outputs, yes and no. Here, this is what we do for yes part. And if it is a no, what do we do? Within the repetition, we what we did was we display the number and we increase that number in order to get the next value. So to display the number, we should use the input output symbol. Here, what do we display? We display the value of n, this value. Then we increase that number. That is a process which happens within the system. What this means is the new value of n will be equal to the previous value of n plus 1. That is what it says. Then what do we do? Then again we have to go and check whether the value of n is greater than 10. This is what a repetition means. You check the value, again you execute the same thing. If it is uh, within the given condition. So now I'll explain this whole flow chart. We started from the value 1 where, because we have to display the values from 1 to 10. So we used to set the value to 1 we used a process and we initiated the value. Then we checked whether the value of n is less than 10. Here as the value of n is 1 it is less than 10. It is not greater than, it, should, it is less than. So it goes to the no side. And then it displays the value of n, where it will display the value 1. And it goes to this step, where it will increase the value of n by 1, where n will become 2. And it goes back to this step, and it will check with whether the value of n is greater than 10. No, again it will display number 2. It goes on 3, 4, 5 like that and when it becomes 10, it goes here and check whether the value of n is greater than 10. As the value is 10, 10 is not greater than 10. So again it will display the value of 10 and it increases the value to 11 and again it will check whether the value of 11 is greater than 10. It is, then it will end the program. So that's it. That's how you draw a flowchart for such situation. That is what a repetition means. Hope you understood the concept. Now let's try to display the total of the numbers from 1 to 10. What should be the difference in this case to the previous one? The only difference is we have to display the total of all these numbers. So what we should do? We have to get the numbers, then we have to add all these numbers together. So how do we do that? As in the previous example, we have to initiate the value uh, 1, then we have to check whether the number is greater than 10, or we can even uh, decide on the other side, uh, whether it is less than or equals to 10. We will try that way in this example. And then if it is less than or equal to 10, we'll calculate the total. We'll calculate the total by adding each number. In initiating the values, we should make another difference in this program. Within this program, we have to calculate the total. So, at the beginning, the, to the value of total is 0. We haven't calculated any. So, the value of total is Zero. So what do we have to do within the repetition? 
we have to calculate the total, we have to increase the number, and again, we have to check whether the number is less than or equal to 10, and if it is, then again we have to calculate the total. It's better I show what happens within the flowchart. In the previous example, we used the condition on the other side. We check whether the n is greater than 10. Here, if it is less than or equal to 10. So, if it is greater than 10, we'll terminate the program. If it is a yes, what we do is, we calculate the total. We say that the total is total plus n. What happens here? In this program, what we have to do is we have to calculate the total of all the numbers from the number 1, 2, up to 10. So what we, what we do is we add 1 to 2 where we get 3 and we add uh, 3 to 3 where the total is 3 in the previous two uh, numbers for the previous two numbers and we add the next number which is 3 to 3 we will get 6 and that is the total up to now and then we will get the next value which is 4 and we add that to the previous total which is 6 and it will become 10 like that it goes on up to 10 so what we do here is we add the previous total to the new number I'll explain the whole flow chart later and total is to total plus n and again we have to increase the number n equals n plus 1 and then we we'll go and check whether the n is less than or equals to 10 ok let's check what happens within this part in this case the value of n is 1 at the beginning and total is 0 and it checks whether the value of n is less than or equals to 10 it is then it calculates the total by adding the previous total to the value n so the previous total at the moment the total is 0 and it adds the value 1 to that total which will ultimately create the new total 1 so n will be increased to 2 and it checks whether the value is less than or equal to 10 yes it is and then it will add the previous total which is 1 plus 2 the new n and it will get 3 here and it will increase the value of n which will create number 3 again it checks whether 3 is less than 10 yes it is and it will add the total at the moment total is 3 the value of the variable total and it will add the value of n which is 3 to that total which will create 6 and again to increase the value to 4 n plus 1 checks whether it is less than or equal to 10 yes it is add the total the value of total is 6 now add that to the value of n which is 4 which will create 10 and it goes on up to the value 10 when it gets the value 10 it will add the value 10 to the total at that time and it will increase the value of 10 to 11 and it, it will check again whether that is less than or equal to 10 then that condition will become false what do we do in the no side do we just terminate the program no we will have to display the total of all these numbers we only did calculate in this part only the calculation of the total so we have to display the total at the end so so we say we display the total after that that is the end then we terminate the program so that's how we simply create a repetition within a flowchart so that also is a simple concept what we did was we analyzed it and we just try to make the algorithm then we figure out the condition and what comes within the repetition then we do the part up to the repetition or the decision symbol 
and within the decisions in the or the repetition we put all the things that repeatedly happens within the program and uh, at the end what should happen after the repetition we put all those together in this project it also is a simple concept just try to figure out the steps that you do in this in these cases in solving this kind of problems so you just show them using a flowchart that's it if you have any questions just use the comment section so that's how we write flowchart or draw flowcharts for given problems uh, in the next lesson we will discuss about the textual representation or the pseudocode how to write a pseudocode how to convert a flowchart into a pseudocode things like that it also is a, is a simple concept we'll come to that in the next lesson so hope you understood all the concepts we discussed in this lesson in this lesson we discussed what a repetition is and we discussed that uh, using two examples how to use repetition within a flowchart so hope you enjoyed the lesson hope you learned everything thanks for watching see you on the next lesson thank you